Good day, everyone. It's Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus Dry Docks. I hear Jason Butterfield, shop manager here. Um, today, we are going to be building a battery pack because the big battery pack in our awesome uh, torpedo shooting Seahound bit the bullet, uh, would not hold a charge. So we're gonna build a brand new battery pack, uh, a big 10 amp monstrous 12 volt uh, battery pack, nickel metal hydride. We're gonna show you how we do it. All right, there's gonna be a few things that you're gonna need uh, in order to build it. Uh, batteries are always a good thing. These uh, we got off of Amazon. These are Tenergy battery packs. I've used Tenergy before, they're, they're actual packs. These are cells, D cells, uh, and they are 10,000 um, 10, milliamps. So when we're done, this is gonna be a 10 amp battery pack. Um, I got 12 here, I'm only gonna need 10 because each cell is 1.2 volts. Uh, and we're going to put them in series. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a minute. But anyhow, you need you need your batteries. The other thing you need uh, are these little uh, tabs, battery tabs. And you can get these online as well. This is what we're going to use to connect each one of the cells together. Uh, next up, a super hot soldering iron. Uh, we're going to use our little gas powered sucker because it puts out some pretty tremendous BTUs. And uh, we do not want to dwell on the cells so that we cook them off. So we want to put as much heat as we can in as concentrated an area as possible. So that is what we're going to do there. Um, low temperature solder. And um, I've got liquid flux, but you need flux of some kind to make sure that everything uh, sticks. Um, that should be it. So um, let's get started. So just to prove that I wasn't lying when I talked earlier, we got our little multimeter here, which is probably something else that you should have. We're just going to check the voltage on the cell. And it's 1.2 volts, as you can see there right now. So uh, 10 times 1.2 wired in series gives us 12 volts, which is exactly what we are trying to accomplish. Now, before we go any further, I want to talk about the difference between parallel and series. So what we we are going to be doing is series. So we're going to be taking the positive end of this cell and connecting it to the negative of this one. And we're just going to keep on going. And every time we do that, the voltages add up. So now we've got, uh, in this particular case, if we were to check, actually, why don't you do that? Let's just do it. I'll hold it here. Check the ends for us. Should be 2.4 and 2 it's 2.5. Yeah, so our voltages added up. So that's how you build a battery pack. Now, the other thing that we can do is run these in parallel. And when you do that, you connect the positives together and the negatives together, and you would end up with a 1.2 volt battery pack with um, double the amps. All right, so there's, it would be a 20 amp battery pack. We're not doing that, we need the voltage. We need our cylinder uh, wants 12 volts. So that is what we are going to do. Um, you know, the other thing that I forgot to mention, which is kind of a big boo-boo, is you need uh, heat shrink tubing. This is what we're gonna use to encase the uh, completed battery pack and make it waterproof, because this is gonna live in the wet. All right, so. What we're gonna do, um, we're gonna begin um, soldering up. Jason's gonna fire up the uh, soldering iron there. I'm just gonna stack some of these batteries to hold this in place. And what we're gonna do is solder this tab like this across the back. And then when we fold it together, it's gonna maintain that and uh, basically make it so that uh, these will be joined physically. Um, you know, rather than just touching each other, they'll be physically soldered together. So like I was telling Jason, we, we want our solder to, to flow like water, not sit like a bubble. Okay. So we've now got these cells. Um, completely soldered together physically. 
And now all we need to do is kind of fold it over like this. And this is how it's gonna sit. So we've got this physical tab connecting them across. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna keep on trucking. We're gonna solder tab, solder tab, solder tab. We're gonna do that 10 times. All right, you got a snake. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, let's check this sucker out and make sure we've got something approaching 12 volts. 12.8, which kind of makes sense. Uh, fully charged, these are gonna be more than that, but this is like how they come out of the box. Little over 1.2, probably 1.22 or something weird like that. All right, so now we need to uh, start attaching some wires and stuff because we need to run our negative all the way up the battery, do, 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 up to here uh, where it'll join with the positive and then we'll have like a little connector on there. All right, so we have, I always say all right, right before I start. <laughs> it gets annoying, even for me. Um, the wire is soldered negative to the negative, positive to the positive. Um, again, you know what? Hey, let's just uh, make sure we know what we're doing here. Hit the probes on the inside there. Just make sure we still got our 12.8 or whatever we were at. Well, point eight. Yep. Okay. So heat shrink, heat shrink. Where did I do with the heat shrink? Okay. Ugh. Ugh. This isn't long enough. Darn it all. We need to get different heat shrink. So, <clears throat> we got some new heat shrink in, and this is uh, heavy duty, thick stuff, um, which is good, and it's also glue lined. So if you heat this up, the glue melts and it kind of fuses uh, to everything in there. So that'll make sure that things don't shift around uh, inside. So what we're gonna need to do now, um, you can see we've got that rubber end uh, in there and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some of the, this RTV gasket maker around the inside um, because that's gonna act like a plug in here. And then on the other side, way back here, we're gonna cut this, heat shrink it, and it's gonna end up in like a little funnel, and then we're gonna squeeze more of this stuff over there. So, let's grab some scissors. A little bit of extra for future projects. <clears throat> All right, Let me squeeze some of that RTV around the perimeter of that plug. Okay. Now, in theory, what's going to happen when that heats up? It's going to shrink and grab on to that plug. So, uh, we even grab our second heat gun. All right, let's go to town. Well, this was poopy. Our little plug got kind of like smooshed out, which is not the end of the wor world because all this was was a core of RTV left over from the last, <coughs> uh, <coughs> excuse me, battery. <coughs> 
So we're just going to pull that out and uh, just like the other side we are going to just fill that up with RTD. Ah, uh, yuck! That's gross. So you know what, what we'll do? <clears throat> Let's fill this with um, RTV and then we'll slip this back and then put another piece around it. It's pretty, that's pretty solid. All right, we have gooped the inside, we've sleeved the inside, the adhesive on the inside has fused itself to the other piece here. Now what we're going to do, we're going to trim this back here so that we can get more RTV into this area and slide that back without cutting the bellows or the wires. Okay. Now, uh, lessons learned in hindsight. What we should have done and what I had intended to do and we just forgot was taped, electrical tape the cells together. So it made a nice straight tube. Um, as it stands right now, it's a little wiggly, but I mean, obviously the, the pack is still 100% viable. It's just not as pretty as it probably should have been. Um, Gonna fill up the other end before we forget and then once that's all cured we'll trim it and again make that look pretty so the last thing that we want to do now that we're all done is double check our voltage make sure that no tabs came undone we didn't cook any cells they didn't explode in there 12.8 volts exactly what it should be reading Okay, we're gonna let this cure uh, for a hefty amount of time, obviously at least 24 hours. And then um, once that's done, it'll go in the boat. Well, there you go. Uh, we finished up our battery. It's gonna cure up overnight and then we'll put it in the boat. Um, hopefully this helps you. Now this is a hefty, hefty battery pack, 10 amps. Um, that's a lot of capacity for an RC submarine. You're gonna run out of energy long before your boat runs out of energy. Um, so sometimes you can get away with like C cells, maybe drop it down to like five amp hours or something like that. But um, we needed the ballast anyway, and we'd already trimmed it for uh, D cell batteries. So uh, we're not gonna redo all of that. Hope you like this. Um, if you do, please like and subscribe. It helps us out a lot. Uh, if you have questions or comments, love to hear from you. Bob at NautilusDryDocks.com. Hit me up anytime. With that, I'm going to let you go. Thanks for joining us, and uh, hey, we'll catch you next time.